first of all thank you so much for uh, sparing your precious time uh, how are you doing i'm fine thank you and uh, looks like this month has been quite busy for you guys uh, there's a deluxe edition of theli coming up and also a dvd uh, which has which is basically uh, the 2007 anniversary concert in budapest as well as the atlanta show in 2011 so yeah. i'm yet to grab my copy how have the fans responded uh well the fans haven't responded because it's just released now so so uh, i think it's being released uh, t- tomorrow in most countries in europe actually. right there are a few videos which have been released and yeah really i'm making promos i i haven't really i haven't checked the internet or anything <laughs> now few albums have you know i got to be honest with you few albums have left me speechless uh, and telly is one of them now this album is is enormous you know it's majestic it's incredible and it's really beyond words so you know do you think this album is you know a milestone in you know therion's career well i mean for me musically it's just another album but it it changed everything for therion in every way back then though so it has to really you know it's a milestone and and because it was the first album that sold anything you know right. before that we wait we made four, four records that didn't sell anything and if you don't sell any records you don't get any good record budget and Absolutely. if you don't have a good record budget you cannot realize your ideas so i was always very frustrated before having tons of cool ideas that i never could realize because there was never the money for the studio and every you know for singers and stuff that i needed right orchestra and so with daily all of a sudden everything changed all of a sudden there was you know money for everything i wanted to do um so of course that changed everything as well um and also from the live situation before we were always trying to get a support like slot with other bands right. we were considered too weird too weird band you know so i mean we did a tour with an ila so that was fun you know playing for the big crowd but uh, their fans mostly didn't understand us and so on so it was very difficult so all of a sudden with Tilly we had our own crowd you know and right. we could do more successful touring so it, it changed everything completely and also on a personal plane because I was living out of music before that but mm-hmm. I was really living out of thin air basically uh, every time I paid my rent every month I had no idea how to pay it next month you know I had to solve it from month to month so you of course changed my life situation to actually start earning a little bit of cash that you don't have to mm-hmm. worry about mm-hmm. how to pay your ele- electricity bill every month you know that you can you know relax a little bit and just focus on on the music absolutely so that's that's really great now would you agree that a record like telly had no boundaries and you know you guys did something that wasn't done before in heavy metal way back in 96 in one way we did things that was already done we just did it much better and in, in a new way mm-hmm. i mean uh celtic frost had a, a, a classical soprano already <laughs> right in, uh, in the pandemonium in 87 and they were metal bands that used choirs before but they used it more like an effect you know like um uh, man of war had a choir already back in uh, 81 right. on, the, on the battle hymns and on the title track so no 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 right so and also Osborne used some some choirs on Dire of a Bad Man so there were always bands that did it but, but they made it as an effect I think we were the first band to do it as a main thing absolutely okay, they just burst off do it all the time and in one way there were also you know bands in the 70s symphonic rock bands that, that did a lot of you know very symphonic stuff but I think we were the first metal band to do it all the way. Right, so it's again, Celtic, you know, it's Celtic like really leading the way there. What 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 Celtic Frost did with the phenomenon was for me mm-hmm. was to realize, like, dude, all these cool '70s bands, you can do that with metal too. You know, <laughs> right, it's not like you have to be boring just because you're a metal band. You can, like, a '70s rock band, True. you can do whatever you like, even if you're a metal band. So that's the most important thing ever I learned from Celtic Frost. Not necessarily the direct influence. It's more like the way of thinking. Like, dude, right. this guy is a limit. What do you want? <laughs> True. Now, to my surprise, I was checking your website and I found, uh, you know, the world's first real rock opera. So, you know, what are your aims and goals in constructing it? Yeah, the thing is that most things that are called a rock opera till now has been more like a rock musical, rather. You know, mm-hmm. there's no opera in it. Normally, it's like. 
probably write rock music, but sometimes it has this orchestration, but it's usually rock singers only, and or sometimes it's just a regular rock album, but right. with a, a story, with a storyline. Storyline, yeah. We I want was... to do it. We we want to have opera singers and orchestra and everything. Really make a true mix between an opera and um, a rock music, uh, which I don't believe anybody did before. Um, so I, I usually think that the, the word rock opera is a bit misleading. Yeah. Many music journalists are, 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 are misunderstanding this. So when I made interviews, they say, "Okay, so when will the album be out?" <laughs> album. No, it's what, if I say Jesus Christ Superstar, nobody will speak of it as an album. Right. They will speak about it as a live performance, and of course there is a studio version as well. But you know, the main thing is a live performance, and this is how we look upon it as well. This will be a a live performance and of course there will be a studio version and there will be a, a, a live DVD from it and maybe even a DVD with um, studio music but with a mm-hmm. performance or whatever in different forms, different formats. Uh, but uh, the main thing is to perform this, that's why we, we do it and this is how it will be remembered and mostly appreciated. That's you will not be in a near of the same experience to listen to the studio version as being there watching the TV. Right. I, you know, I had this uh, thought that, you know, do, do you want to uh, you know, sort of see how fans uh, will react to these ideas, you know, after they go back home and then think about these ideas and then basically put forward their opinion on the internet? Yeah, that was the idea with the tour we did in, in December to try some of the ideas. So, because the thing is like this, we need to have a reach out to the mainstream crowd to right. realize this because it's such an expensive production. Absolutely. If you, uh, normally uh, as a rock band or a metal band, we, we make a show in one city and then we pack all the stuff and we go to the next city and it continue like that. Right. But if you have this huge production, you cannot do that. It, it takes a long time to put everything up, it takes a long time to put everything down, and you need tons of trucks and shit to, to uh, transport everything between the shows. So unless you're on Metallica level, it's not doable. You need to do multiple shows at each city. Right, that's and true. We, we cannot sell out multiple shows mm-hmm. with only our own fans. Right. Um, if we only did it in one place and people have to travel, maybe, but if we're going to continue to do it in different countries, we need to attract uh, the mainstream musical crowd or whatever you like Absolutely. to call that. Uh, basically, we, we want your parents' cash, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, so we need to do something that is not commercial, but accessible, you know, something that you can reach. i give you a good example. Mm-hmm. The song of Lemuria. I, your mother may like it or dislike it, it's a matter of taste, but at least your mother won't say, oh, I cannot listen to that type of music. Right, you know? that's so true. Our song of Lemuria is, is a type of music that could appeal to our parents. Mm-hmm. At the same time, it's one of our, our own fan favorites, and at the same time, it's one of our, our personal favorites, too. So you can please the, the fans and the band and also be able to reach uh, Absolutely. Uh, a, a different type of audience. Not saying that we will have to sound like the song of Maria, it's just an example, you know, that you can make music that can fit different audiences. True. Uh, so, so that's what, what we need to do to make this work. And we felt with the stuff that we wrote that we like this. And yeah, my mom could listen to this, but mm-hmm. let's try this with our own crowd now, because we, we don't want to make something and then um, the fans won't like it. Normally when we make a record, I just do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. If people like it, I'm happy. If they don't like it, well, too bad. Maybe you like the next album better, you know. But it's not, of course, we want people to like the records, but right. we don't try to take the chance to be like that. For this project, we have to, because we need everybody, you know. We need our fans to be there to guarantee we sell out the first show. Right. We need to, your your parents to come as well. So it's, it's, it's really um, it's mutual. a project they're going to take. Many, many years to do it. I don't want to spend three years of my life working on something and then it won't be able to realize. You know? right. so I'm really keen making sure we're on the right path. And how far the reactions uh, from the live performances last December have been more than 90% positive. Wonderful. Now, so it seems like we're in the right direction. Uh, that's wonderful. Like, this is the point which I basically, you know, I've always appreciated is the way you approach things. You know, I always had this image of you being a fairly strong-minded person who will always follow, you know, his artistic vision regardless of other people's opinions. Yeah, but sometimes you need to be a realist as well, you know. <laughs> right. Like, you have to. If I just want to make a record and people buy my record, sometimes they sell more. Sometimes 
they said less, less. But, you know, we're always on an acceptable level. I can afford to, to be 100% artistic integrity and like do whatever I want. But if I aim for something beyond that, I might need to check that everything works, you know. It's, right. It's like before, before Tilly, you know, we had small budgets. I had big visions, but I couldn't record all the songs. I had to record the songs that was suitable with mm -hmm. that budget. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes you have realities that make you that you have to limit yourself. I mean, right. if we make this rock opera now and, it, and it's a really big success, then next time, uh, if, if I want to make another rock opera, you know, there will be um, musical promoters that made tons of money on the last one. We say, yeah, write a new one, write a new one, then I can <laughs> do whatever right. I want again. But, but now it's, it's, we're going into unknown territory and these people that sit with the fat checkbooks, mm -hmm. you know, they're not like a metal promoter who likes the music and knows the band and they're like, yeah, I like you, love like you. They, they don't give a shit about anything with the music, they're businessmen, you know. They right. don't see, does this work or not? Can I earn money from this or Yes, not? it's from the money um, perspective. Yeah, so, so they, they, they don't say like, oh, I really like the music and it's a cool story, let's put it up, you know. They will put it up if they think it can be successful. Uh, so to impress them, they need to earn cash, that's how it works. It's, it's a completely different thing from, from the metal scene. Absolutely. Now, you, d you did a tour recently, uh, you know, and I could figure out that only a band like Therian can do unusual and you know democratic stuff uh, like you did on the tour you know you know does it does this mean that fans are kind of allowed to have a say on what your musical direction should be no you can't listen to everybody on the individual level like oh Eduardo want this and Michael want that you know it will be a civil war uh, but you can have a, a general thing I mean if, if you would perform uh, would we perform five pieces from five compositions from, from the rock opera and it, it, everybody or like a majority would have said yeah we love this except that piece that was total crap then you know we could maybe think okay this direction right. is not so so appreciated so we should maybe try to have less of this direction I mean it's not like everybody has to love every single part of it maybe uh, you would need that type of music anyway for certain things because True. it's necessary I mean if you have a, if you have a love scene you cannot have grindcore playing there, you know, or if you have a, a, some very spooky scene or something, mm, right. you cannot have happy music, you, you need to have different types of stuff, but, but if you notice that people say, okay, this direction we didn't like, True. then you can try to steer it in, in another direction, like the main thing, or have a little bit less of that, um, so it's, it's like more a cosmetic change. Right, right, I understand that. But, very, but it's still very important, you know, if, because if if everybody would have said like okay that last piece you did on stage it, it mm -hmm. sucked then we would have to you know question our own judgment what works you know? right. but it seems like we kind of understand what works and what doesn't true that's right now it's been so many decades uh, you know do you sometimes really feel that you know uh, something has to be done to make sure let's say some of your fans you meet some of your fans expectations yeah we always do people every time we make a new record there's always <laughs> people complaining a lot because we change a lot between the records if, if you would touch from the comments on the internet right. uh, since the internet became um, you know everybody's yeah, from Secret on the Room and onwards mm -hmm. it would seem like we never made a popular album you know that we were never a successful band because there's always people complaining and when Secret of the Rooms came people were like oh it's boring it's only opera will go no mm -hmm. rock will go boring blah 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 and then when we made the Muria Sides B they were complaining that one, and then we made uh, Gothic Kabbalah I was complaining right. about it, and we made Citra there were other complaints, it was too vintage, and this and that, and then we made, of course, Le Fleur de Mal, which the intention was to, you know, True. take advantage of the complainers, so obviously it was one complaint. Uh, but also, opinions seem to change, like when Secret of the Runes came out, it was considered a bit of a flop by the record company, because yep. it sold off of what was Bowen had sold, I mean, Vigil sold a bit less, and then Secret of the Runes was completely dropping sales. Right. But if you ask, if you ask fans today, most fans would say it's the best record, so it's... Absolutely. By the fans today, considered our best album. So, if we would have listened to people then, you know, like, okay, Secret of the Runes was a bad <laughs> album. You know, people change, change right, their right. opinion. So just do a record that you like, and sometimes you get more luck, sometimes not so much. And Absolutely. Also with Lemuria and Tyrus B, our sales went up a lot again. Mm. And then it went down a bit, which we got the capital, so it's, sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. Absolutely. Do, 
there will always be people having strong opinions. But on the other hand, that that's also good for the band because there's discussion and there's better promotion that you can get right. people talking about you. Absolutely. You can buy adverts in magazines. So it's, it, it's more like, a, you know, the the word of mouth, it, it goes on, people talk about it, it basically helps the band to some extent. Yeah, even sometimes bad uh, talking can help because it, it makes people, there's always people who want to be anti, or it can make people curious. And right. when I threw them out, the whole idea was to make people say, what the fuck? And then everybody gets curious, I need to hear this. So I, I didn't tend to promote it at all with, you know, buying any adverts or anything. I, I just sold it by making it available. True. That's wonderful. Now you know uh, I have this uh, you know an opinion on your music that it's 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 so well structured and it's so I feel it's ahead of its time. You know that will take a few years for people to really appreciate who what's offered to them. Now there are fans who who know. Like that. Yeah, it, it has often been like that. Not always, but, but I mean even from the beginning of the band, we used to <laughs> right. no, basically no death metal band did it. And on our third album, we used. Uh, Middle Eastern influences and people right. thought, hey, fucking K-pop music, you know, and now it's very common. We make heavy metal with death metal all the time back in 93, way before Inflames started making a career out of that. So that was always our, our problem in the beginning that we were, were always ahead of the time. So it wasn't really helping the band in the beginning. We were just considered strange. Right. Uh, but I guess after Tilly, we, from being a strange band, we became a trendsetter. Absolutely. I right. also, with, also with a, a gothic cabalot that had a lot of progressive stuff. Yes. You know? I mean, a few years later, you had a progressive wave, and with Citrara, it was more like uh, vintage in many ways, and now we have this 70s wave coming. So. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's the beauty, because you know your sound is something to take note of, you know, with, with the vision of melding metal as well as the orchestral symphonies, uh, especially the way the material on Thelly is written, you know, it has its very strong emphasis on uniqueness and, you know, the listeners are able to see the patterns of creativity flow as they unfold. Yeah, well, yeah, really, we, we just write the music we like, so it's, it's never really been calculating, like, let's try to be original or let's try to do something new. Um, Really, I have very little control of my songwriting in that way. I, it's more like I have a little demon on my shoulder who sings songs in my ear once in a while. Right. Um, so I, I, I really shouldn't take any credit for being like musically smart or anything. I, I just write music, and I'm just lucky that you know it comes out to be original. Right. I mean, it, it could it could have been that we would have been an easy easy type of band to just write the same thing all the time. I have really very little control over what I write or how. Right, Th that's true. Now, so you know, according to you, where does Therian, you know, Therian lie? Is it you know lies in the mainstream or the underground? <laughs> well, uh, neither. I mean, underground is one thing, and mainstream. I would say that you know when you can buy your CDs at the gas station. <laughs> right. Um, I, I think that in between that you have an independent scene, and I, I, I think we've been a part of the independent scene since. True. Well, maybe the first first few records was on the ground, but, but mm -hmm. um, at least since we signed it into laws, we've been a part of the independent thing. Right. Uh, mainstream, there's not met in, many metal bands, I would say it's mainstream, okay, Metallica. And, uh, maybe Nightwish even, because it became so big, it's so all fucking platinum on some of them. But platinum selling out. albums, right, yeah. That's yeah, true. Yeah, but then it's hard to say that you're not mainstream and you can buy your records at, you know, at the down in the airports and right. number one in all the charts. Uh, but maybe well, Black Sabbath and also Osprey became so big that they're mainstream. Right, but, as they grew. There's, there's, there's few metal bands that are mainstream. True, that's absolutely but true. Few giants. Right. Now, you know, it's been 25 years of creative success for you. You know, do you feel at this point of time that, you know, you have accomplished something very, you know, something very great in your career? Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I mean, I, I never regret anything with it in my career. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the sales are up, sometimes well down, but in the long run, it's always good to be loyal to your inner emotions and just do what you want. Right. In the beginning, when we, we made record after record and we never sold anything, I sometimes heard from people, hey, but why don't you make something more sellable? Mm -hmm. And I just thought, like, make something more sellable. That then 
then I'm a musician, not an artist. Right. Um, then I'm just a performer, not an artist. And you, you cannot be an an artist that right. know, people tell you what to do. Okay, I mean, if you're if you're a musician and you can't make a living out of it, you can make a cover band and play at pops, you know, play our maiden covers, so you will get money to pay your rent. That's fine. <laughs> but when you you create your own music, you should do the music you would like to listen to, Absolutely. not what, what you think other people would like to hear. So what it's, we it's easy to say those words. It's very easy to say those words, but uh, it, when it really comes to it, you know, you have to eat the words or, or live up to them. Yeah. So. And um, I, I think I really did that because, you know, even when when we had um, sales going down, like mm. with, with six of the rooms, we never tried to copy anything we did in the past. We always you know, did what we wanted. No, you didn't try to rehash. So it was basically you followed your own instincts. Yeah, and when Tiffany was out, which was her first well selling album, of course the record label was like, Oh, come on, give us a Tiffany part two now. Mm-hmm. Why risk to lose? Finally, after all this year, you had success. Why would you be stupid enough to risk anything now? But I thought if I would start thinking of what people want instead of, instead of what I want, mm-hmm. and when I finally have success, then all the years to the success would have been wasted. Right. Um, so. When we made Robin, it was a different direction. It was much, you know, with none of my singing and much cleaner production, much more accessible, more uh, melancholic and laid back type of music. But, you know, I was rewarded. We sold double from Robin for what we sold. Right, absolutely. So uh, it, it always showed me that in the end, it may be a difficult path, but in the end, it always pays off being honest. Absolutely. Now, you've you're been on stage for decades, you know. Uh, how does it feel looking at the current scene? I mean, how does it feel when you're on stage and you see uh, a sea of cell phones and video cameras taking photographs? <laughs> so, you know... Go- good question. <laughs> it's very weird. Before you were seeing people making the sign of the devil, now you see their iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I was yeah. about to tell you because gone are the days when you used to see horns, now you see only video cameras. Yeah, I noticed that many years ago already, you know, it's like when the smartphones started to be popular. Or even before that, when you have feature phones with cameras, you know, it, right. they tried some time in Sweden, like, oh, if you have a phone with a camera, you need to leave it in at the wardrobe, but in the end, it just didn't work, you know, you can't take the mobile phone out of a thousand people <laughs> <laughs> and dis- distribute it back, so it's just something you have to live with, but on, on the good side, uh, they also document, so also with kind of poor quality, but when people video film something, you know, it's fun, you can actually... The same evening after the show, you can go to YouTube and you can see part of your show. You yes, know. that's true. Like, but oh, what happened? What happened in that song? Like, did you fuck up? Did I fuck up? <laughs> I don't know. Let's check YouTube. You know, and right. It, and you can, you know, replay it. Yeah, but at the same time, don't you think it? You know, a, a fan is not part of the experience when he does that. Well, it, it seems like they're getting some of their focus rather on filming than seeing what you do, which is a <laughs> bit sad in a way, but. But it's just how things are, you know, it's like you can't change it, so... Absolutely. Just kick ass and stuff and make a good show. I mean, they pay the tickets, so, I mean, if they want to dress naked as man, or if they want to take photos, it's up to them, you know. They right. pay for the tickets and they can behave how they like, you know. Almost. Wow. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Christopher, you know, all I can say is, you know, to all the fans that buy, order, steal, beg, or do whatever you can do to get your hands on this record as it truly stacks up to be one of a kind thank you very much you know i would like to uh, uh, thank you so much for you know sparing your precious time with us today well my job it's always fun to talk about you know what you do the day i'm, I'm getting you know lazy and like oh do i have to talk about it then maybe it's time to retire you know one should be happy that the people who want to talk to you so right that's absolutely true I, we wish you all the best for your future endeavors and looking forward to you know to catch you guys in live in India. I don't know when are you guys going to come here. Uh, we come as soon as anybody wants to book a show for us. You know that, that's the thing. You know we, we don't sit with a big map and say oh let's play there <laughs> or there. Like, right. If we, get a, 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 if we get an offer that works, we go and play. And I mean, from a personal point of view, I would love to come to India. I mean, we have uh, a lot of uh, influences lyrically from India. You know, I mean, apart I from the lyrical influences, you have fans here, you have dedicated fans here. I have an electric sitar that we used also, you know, 
Oh, good. Congratulations. And, uh, you know, it would be great. I mean, I wanted to go to India for a lot of times just for vacation, you know, to see places like Calcutta and Varanasi. And right. Places. Nonetheless, um, but, uh, yeah, I never had time for vacation these days. I have a <laughs> five-year-old son, so, you know, some right, I can understand. more adventurous trips for me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, we're going to do some some shows probably in um, in Russia later this year, far off in the east in Siberia. And, and I heard, I, I was meeting Nergel from um, Behemoth the other day, and he said they were playing in Nepal. You know, yes, they played in Nepal earlier this year. Yeah. So the, the markets over there are opening more and more. I mean, if somebody would have said, play Siberia to me 10 years ago, we'd be like, you must be joking. <laughs> <Play Siberia, laughs> right. Russia, nobody plays Siberia. And the same thing with... Um, uh, like playing Arabic countries, like they have this uh, festival in Dubai. I mean, right. that would have been completely unthinkable. So now I hear from them, like, oh, they've played in India, they had a great experience, so it is, it's, it's opening up. And same thing with China. But the thing is, with Syrian, um, we're an expensive band because there's so many people in the band. There's a lot yes. of flight tickets, and if there are work permits, there are a lot of work permits, and I, I run the, the band as a company, so that means I have to pay off a lot of people. Right. Um, but if we get an offer, I mean, my, my attitude is like this. If I go to a new exciting country, I don't need to get paid. I can go and do one show just for seeing something new and having a good time. Oh. If I go the second time, then, not, then I want to get paid. Uh, but, but just by paying my band and everything still makes us a pretty expensive. Right. You, I can understand that. It, it was an honor to have you with us, Christopher. Don't give up uh, hoping for us to come there, you know. One day we'll play in India and that will be really my pleasure. So thank you very much for listening and one day.